just a little, and I don't want to bore you to tears. So when you see this, don't sort of glaze over and go to sleep. <laughs> right. Okay. So um, we're gonna we're gonna tackle the dreaded P word, um, or at least in very very basic sense, just to give us um, uh, um, a background to what we're gonna try and achieve today. So um, obviously, this top left little doodle is a basic representation of one of the reference that I sent out, which was the one with the canal kind of going up and under the bridge. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I just want to kind of explain in very simple terms, because um, obviously perspective can get very boring and very kind of um, dry. If you start talking about vanishing points and all the rest of it, it can get, you know, you can kind of fall asleep with it all. So, keeping it all really, really simple, what I want you to think about as we're sort of going through these drawings is, can you see on top of the object, I like this, so can you see inside the boat like we can here? Yeah. yeah, so we can see inside the boat there, we can see on top of this object, okay? So yeah. what that's basically telling us is that it's below our mm -hmm. eye level, okay? Mm -hmm. Now you may wonder what is your eye level? So the eye level is sometimes referred to as what's called the horizon line, but effectively it's the height of your eyes in your head, okay? And everybody's obviously in this because everybody's different heights, but effectively, it's where your eye level is, okay, where your eyes are. Now, because, now because we're working from photographs, okay, this eye level here is the camera lens. Okay, you don't really need to worry about that, but effectively, you don't need to um, uh, change it just because you're holding your photograph at a different height, if that basically means, and if that makes any sense. So the fi it's fixed in the photograph, but it's not fixed when you, look to, when you look at things in life. All right, so that's the difference between horizon line when you're looking at it in life and horizon line when you're looking at it in a photograph, okay? Yeah. Yes. So all of these, all of these reference that we're working with, um, that I sent out, the two that I sent out are fixed. So they're already set. So the one with the bridge, Okay, the eye level is roughly, and you only need to know roughly where it is, and I'll explain how you can roughly work that out. It's roughly about there, okay, and I'll explain why in a second. And on the, um, I don't know, yeah, but on, um, in the boat with the canal that kind of goes up and then around the corner with the buildings, the eye level is roughly just about where the bridge or, or halfway through the bridge, okay? Now, how do we work that out? So what we're looking for are um, uh, convergences of things, all right? So if you look at, I don't know if you've got the reference in front of you, but if you actually look at the, uh, let's have a look. Let me bring this over here. So if I bring this reference over, so can you, everybody see that, okay? Hopefully you can see that, it's not too glary. So what I'm looking at is the, this line at the base of the buildings here, look at where it goes, it goes on up, 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 and then it sort of um, hits the bridge sort of about there, okay? If we look at this shadow over here, it's sort of going across. I know it changes angle there, but we won't talk about that at the moment. So it sort of comes in and it's guiding our eye over here. If we look at the top of the windows over here, they're going downwards, okay, towards the left. The, uh, where else have we got? I can't see because it's all glary. But look at this line here, there's another line that's going down towards the right, okay? Now I'll explain why. So, <clears throat> The eye level is the first point you need to figure out. So all of those lines were going up and they were going down roughly, and it's not an exact science, but it's just a basic um, guesstimate of where the, um, your eyes are or where the camera lens was when the photograph was taken, okay? So once we've figured that out, what we can then know is what's below that and what's above it. Like we just talked about here, if you can see inside something, i.e. you can see or on top of something, like we can see inside the boat, we can see on top of this cube, we know it's below our eye level. Generally, it's not always the case because obviously if someone tilts a cup above your head, you can see inside it, but we'll just disregard that for the moment. So the basic idea is that. Now, if it's above your eye level, then generally you start to see the bottoms of things, okay? So for example, I can see underneath this block, I can see underneath this block, I can't see the top of the block, can't see the top of the block. And similarly, if you had windows kind of going away, you would start to see the underside of the windowsill. 
okay and you would probably see other things that you can see underneath but you wouldn't see on top of them and that kind of then dictates that it's above your eye level so why is that important so it's important because the lines above or below the eye level change angle okay so generally lines that are below your eye level go up okay up towards your eyes so you think of a road so that you, there's a quite a famous sort of um, photograph. So I'll just do this for a second. If you have a horizon line like this in the distance, you've got a road that kind of goes away like that into the distance. Okay, and then you can't see past the point of where it meets the horizon line or your eye level. Okay, so that's what we're talking about here. So these lines obviously going up and then lines above your eye level are obviously going down. Okay. Now, the really confusing thing that a lot of people get stuck with perspective is that's very simple to obviously understand, but it's like, well, where do they go? How do they go? All right. So down here, I've just drawn this very, very basic um, street. All right. And I've defined my eye level as being sort of this far up the picture. So the buildings on the left hand side, and this is a row of buildings. All right. So this is think of it like a terrace. So the roof line is coming down towards the eye level, coming down, coming down, coming down. And these windows correspondingly, as they come lower down the building, it's like a clock face. They get less and less steep as they're coming down the building. So they'd be doing this. Okay, so the ones higher up are always more steep than the ones lower down. All right, so the ones near the bottom near your eye level are almost flat. And then equally, if you had windows and they were sort of below your eye level, then they would start to go up, okay? And then on the right-hand side, they would do the opposite to what they did on the left-hand side. So they'd be going down this way or going up, depending on which way you see it, okay? Up towards, um, towards the right. So that's very simple, okay? So that's almost akin to what we've got in this drawing because we've got a point where the, the buildings converge, it goes round the corner, okay, behind the bridge. But to get it to go behind the corner, there's a very, very subtle change in direction. And I've done a very, very basic um, version of it here. So the left-hand buildings is exactly the same as this. So you've got the edge of the building, you've got the roof line, we can't see the roof in the reference, but the roof line would come down. You've got the the, the windows and all the arches and everything doing what I just described here. Okay, on the right hand side of it, the buildings go behind this building. So they disappear in the distance around there. So how do we describe that? Well, basically we need to have the edge of this building higher than the edge of this building. If they stop at the same point, so if I do that on the drawing, it doesn't go around the corner, it looks like it just stops at the edge of this building. So to get these objects to look like they're behind those objects, there has to be a little bit of distance between those two lines. Okay, that's the first thing. <clears throat> the second thing is that as the buildings go up and around, we get more changes in angle. And as things start to turn and become um, more square on to you, they get flatter. Okay, so they don't get steeper, they get flatter. So over here, obviously, we've got very steep lines, very steep lines. And as they're going around the corner, they're actually flattening out. Doesn't matter how high up they are, they just flatten out, all right, on straight edges generally. Okay, and that's how we get this idea of it going up and then around the corner into the distance. Okay, so that's a very, very basic idea of perspective. I'm not going to start talking about vanishing points and two-point vanishing points, three-point vanishing points because I don't really use any of that. And I think it all gets a little bit too confusing. All you need to remember is where's your eye level? Can I see on top of it? Can I see underneath it? <clears throat> is it on the right side of me or is it on the left side of me? Okay, those are the main things you need to remember. All right, enough done. Any questions on that? <clears throat> or does anyone want to comment on that? Does that make sense before we get started in the drawing? So I take it from your silence, you've all fallen asleep. <laughs> Brilliant, okay, my job is done. They're all fine, thank you. <laughs> okay, no worries. Um, right, so the, um, the first drawing I thought we would do, first of all, is a slightly easier one, and then we'll tackle <laughs> the second one if we get time. 
um, afterwards. So the first one we're going to do is the the misty um, Venice one, nice one. Mm -hmm. um, with the the kind of the gondola. So this sort of one here. All right. So that's what we're going to do first of all. Now the materials I'm going to use are um, charcoal. If you don't have charcoal, uh, then you can use pencil, um, or you could even use pastel if you've got it. Um, I would recommend just maybe only using one colour in the pastel rather than multiple colours, but it's up to you. Now, charcoal, so I'm going to talk a little bit about charcoal and what we can do with it. The charcoal is obviously, in its basic essence, just burnt wood. And what I've got here is just a piece of sandpaper. Now, if you don't have sandpaper, what you can use is um, just a craft knife or um, just a knife from the drawer. And you can kind of get some shavings like this. And what you want to do is you want to do this onto a piece of paper just to get a load of shavings. It might take you quite a while of using a craft knife, but effectively you'll get a load of the, the charcoal just come off onto a piece of paper. Okay. Mm -hmm. so Stuart, what I'm gonna can do... I use, sorry, can I use graphite 6B? Yeah, like I said, if you're using graphite, what you're going to want to do is do the same thing on some sandpaper or onto a piece of paper to get the, um, uh, the dust. Does that make sense? Yes, thank okay. you. Yep. So what we're after is a load of dust. All right. So what I'm going to do is this all over this sandpaper. So I've got quite amount of um, uh, charcoal dust. Now, unfortunately, you don't really want to try and breathe this in because it is a little bit dusty, obviously. Um, so try not to blow it too much or um, get it in the atmosphere, otherwise you're going to get it all over yourself. And it is a bit dirty as well, so you will get a bit messy, but hey-ho, it's all par for the course. Right, so once you've got yourself some dust, <clears throat> what you're going to want to do is then we're going to sprinkle it over our um, cartridge paper. So this is just, um, as I said, uh, smooth, not really, really smooth, but just some smooth cartridge paper. I've taped it down to a bit of board so it doesn't move. And now, um, yeah, we're going to start chucking this on. OK, so just nice and lightly, I'm just going to tap the back of the paper just to get the, the dust to start to come off onto my, um, onto my paper. And really, I'm focusing the main bulk of this through the middle section. OK, so through the middle part where obviously those buildings and um, that kind of thing really are. All right. It doesn't matter if you can't keep it in that area, but because we're going to move it around anyway. Just to give you an idea. OK, so that's got me some dust on there. Stuart, sorry to be a pain. Could you just explain what you did with the charcoal again? Yeah, sure. Please. So the charcoal I have basically taken, this is just a piece of sandpaper. Oh, that's the sandpaper. That yeah, so this is sandpaper. Oh, right. It's a big bit. If you don't have sandpaper, then you can do it. You can do the same thing with um, just a piece of paper and yeah. just rub it on the piece of paper. Might take you a bit longer. Yeah, okay. But you will build up some dust on a piece of paper if you don't have sandpaper. All right. Okay. And then just tip it like I've just shown you onto the, onto the paper. All right. Okay, so. So I'll give you a moment just to do that. And then you're going to want to get some tissue ready. Are you there? So I'm just using um, just some kitchen roll here. And all I'm going to do is just fold it. No, no particular cleverness to this. It's just so that we can um, mush the, uh, the, the dust in. So what we're going to do now is just, as I said, take some tissue paper, um, not tissue paper as in the, the crepe paper, but, you know, kitchen roll. And then lightly, I don't want you to press too hard, but just nice and lightly, all we're going to do is just start to move around this dust. OK, and you'll get some nice marks. And we just start to build up some tone on our paper. Okay, it doesn't have to be too intelligent in the way that you do this. Now, when you go, so obviously we just 
mushed all that in. So the paper, the tissue, as you can see, has got quite, quite dirty. Now, if you want to lift some of the charcoal off and you don't want to spread it and get it so far, you can obviously go to a clean bit of tissue and then you'll get lighter marks. Obviously, if you, once you get rid of the dust, but you'll get lighter marks in that area. So I'm just going to go to a clean bit at the top here now. So it's a lot lighter. Okay, so that's my top area. And then the same thing again at the bottom down here. I don't want it too dark. Obviously you need enough tone on there to be able to rub into it, but you don't want it so dark that we can't do anything with it. And actually on this left, right-hand side, it needs to be a bit darker. Okay, so that's that. And all I'm gonna do now is just tip off the excess. We'll blow it gently, um, just to get rid of the excess. Okay, so now that gives me a surface that I can um, draw into. And charcoal is incredibly um, editable. So even if you touch it, you're gonna get fingerprints and all sorts in, in this. So that's where we can use it to actually start to create some interesting marks. So the first thing I'm going to do is define where my sun is going to come. Now you want your sun to be in an area of, 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 of dark. Obviously, if I start rubbing the sun out up here in the white, it's not going to show up. So I'm going to have my sun somewhere around here and I'm just going to make it quite small. Don't want to go too big. And I'm just using, if you've not seen one of these before, this is a putty rubber. So this is a, almost a little bit like blue tack where you can kind of clean it by stretching it out. <clears throat> this particular one you can get from WH Smith, which is really good. Um, it's a blue one and it, it lasts very, very well. So you kind um, of do that. Do you, Sorry? you haven't got a rubber, what could you use? You can use a normal rubber. You can even just use your finger. Oh, okay. Um, you can kind of just keep working it with, and just keep cleaning your finger off. Um, it's just a putty rubber will get it a lot cleaner. So what I'm gonna do now with my son is with my little finger, it doesn't have to be a little finger, but I just want a smaller mark, press on that white bit and then just very, very lightly, I'm just gonna circle and lifting off the pressure as I circle. And obviously if you go too big with this, you can um, reduce the size of it, but that'll do. That's my son. Might clean up the center a little bit more, make it a bit brighter. So the nice thing with um, a putty rubber that you can do is, I don't know if you can see this, but I can manipulate it a little bit like modeling clay. So you can get a nice fine point like that, or you can model it to give you a nice straight edge like that. So when you're trying to take out fine detail, these are really, really useful. Okay, so that's my sun roughly in its place. So then we need to do a little bit of drawing now. I'll give you a moment just to catch up on that. <clears throat> you may want to use a, um, a ruler for this bit, but I'm just going to eyeball it. But if you want to use a ruler, then by all means do so, or a piece of card, like we did last, last week, just to give us a straight, um, a straight edge of the, for the horizon, for, well, for the edge of the water, really. But I'm just going to guesstimate it. So I'm going to come about halfway roughly halfway so i'm holding my charcoal on the side so i'm not trying to use the tip of the charcoal and i'm just running it straight across the board it's a bit wonky but it doesn't matter we'll straighten that up afterwards so just to give me a line okay <clears throat> so that's now defining where this is the water and then obviously then we've got buildings and so on and distant buildings <coughs> excuse me going on on the top side of that line so i'm going to define now where this right hand pontoon building comes in because he kind of defines the um uh, the point at which the cathedral or whatever you call it is going to start so i'm actually going to bring um 
the edge of this first building to about there. And then the rooftop will come. And now because this building is straight onto us, it's flat. There's no angle to this rooftop, it's just straight on. So it sort of comes in and then we've got some funny little shape thing there and then it kind of comes down straight, just straight down. No angle at all to it, just comes straight down there like a vertical line. There's some funny little doodads on the side of that. There's some little pontoony things that sort of stick out. And then we come down and then we're at the water roughly. So notice I'm trying to draw the shape, the contour of that shape, rather than say, well, there's a window in here and the edge of that pontoon comes to here. I don't care about that. All I'm really worrying about is what is the shape or the contour that that line is making against the, um, the distant kind of silhouette of that cathedral, of that um, building, okay? <clears throat> And then we've got some shadow, or not shadow, but reflection that's going to come in here. And the reflection, obviously the darkest part of the reflection is going to come below this line. Okay, there's no point having a shadow over here when the main part of the building is here. Because ours, here's our light source. And the shadow or the reflection generally is going to come below the, um, the main object. So we have that kind of wiggling its way down there. So that's enough. <clears throat> now, by, because we defined this, we can now see where the distant building starts to poke its head out from behind this main building. So we start to get this sort of almost like a mountain or a landscape kind of situation. And again, all I'm looking for is just the the contour, I don't care about any internal lines. What I'm looking for is just the, the, the contour shape that this building is making. So it kind of goes down there, comes across. Then we get these little spiky bits, little spiky bits, more spiky bits. And then we're at the main, um, a dome. So what I'm going to do with the dome is I'm going to say where the right hand side of the dome is. Then I'm going to come across to the left hand side and define where the left hand side of the vertical is. OK, rather than sort of go here and then carry on drawing round, 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 round and get to this side. It's far, far easier when you know where the two the two sides are. We can kind of just say, well, let's split that in the middle and then let's come up. And say, well, that's now my center. Okay, of these two lines. Once you know where the center is, it's far, far easier then to bring the edge of that into the center and the edge of that into the center. If you don't know where the center is, then when you start drawing this curve, it'll probably go too far over. And when you do this one, it'll go too short or vice versa. Okay, so you need to define where the center of these two lines are to make it easier to bring the curve in. And then we still can't bring the curve in yet because there's a little, um, vertical there and there's a little vertical there either side of that line. Now once we've got that we can actually then do the curve as straight lines. So the top of the curve, oops, top of the curve kind of comes out sort of flattish then it starts to go downhill, goes downhill and then downhill more. So we do the same on the outside so it comes out straightish or flattish, I should say. And you're not gonna get this 100% right to start off with. Oops, this charcoal's gone a bit funny. And then we go downhill, downhill, and downhill. Now, once you've got some lines there, then you can edit it. So let's come up a bit more there and come up a bit more there. So it's a bit more in the center. That's fine for the moment. I'll play around with that later. So then, we come across and then there's a tiny little gap, little sliver. So I'm looking at the, um, the negative shape. So the negative shape is the outside edge of, of this curve and the outside edge of this curve. And then this little shape that's made in between the two, the two buildings. 
So you want to kind of try and draw that little shape if you can. <clears throat> so that kind of comes there. And then again, we find the other side of this, which is narrower than the main one. So then we can define where the peak is. And then again, we can start putting our dome shape. So that's sort of like that. That needs to come up a little bit there. Okay, and then we've got this little tower. Again, with a very small sliver between the two. And then looking back to here, this line of the bottom of all of those shapes stops at the same point. So then we can come across straight, so straight across. And then we've got another little upright that comes across and that's got some funny little turrets in it. And then we come downhill, go out slightly, downhill, and then we're at the edge where there's, and because it's silhouetted, we're not gonna worry about what's in front of what. We're just gonna do it all as one shape. I think that's a tree and there's some other shapes come across and then straight down to the um, water level. It might be a little bit too high, we don't need to bring that water level up slightly. Let's just do that very quickly. Okay. So then we've got some distant bits of land, buildings, whatever you want to call it, poking out from the back of this. So then we'll do the same little trick. So we just come out, there's some little verticals. Oh, that might be a bit too high. Oops, just put some sun behind that. We'll move that in a minute. Comes across little bits of detail. And then there's another sort of big structure on this left hand side and again it's got a little dome on it so we'll just dome that slightly and then we come down and then there's a something there and then it goes away and then into the distance okay so for line that's the that's enough then for those distant shapes because we're going to we're going to um, silhouette it all in a moment so I don't want you to fiddle with it too much and we're not going to bother with the the main boat just yet because <clears throat> charcoal is the kind of medium where if you put everything in then you start dusting this down so it's a little bit more like watercolor process so you want to think about that distant part and then we'll come forward and then we'll get this main part in afterwards over the top of what we do back here otherwise you've got to go round shapes and it just all becomes very cumbersome so what I want you to do is to think about um, tone and obviously that's what charcoal is great for it's just a very tonal medium you know we've got the white of the paper we've got um, the various soft um, tones of the rubbed in charcoal and then you've got the the darkest dark, which obviously is when you press the charcoal really hard. For example, if I fill in this pontoon area, first of all, if you can see when I press the charcoal really hard, I get a very dark mark. So what I want you to do, first of all, is on this right hand side is fill in your darkest dark. And this is a little bit similar to how we would um, paint with oils or acrylics as opposed to watercolour. So in watercolour generally we wouldn't do this unless you're very brave. Um, we would tend to work from the lighter colours up to the darker colours and I'm just going to graduate this to so take the pressure off as I go down. So all I was doing there is just taking the pressure off the charcoal so it gets lighter. Um, so yes, as I was saying, in watercolours, we would generally work 
in a much lighter fashion in the early stages and then work darker on top. But with this kind of medium, we can, we can actually, because it rubs off very, very easily, we don't have to worry if we get something wrong, we could just wipe it out or we can rub it out or we can um, just draw over the top of it. So that's why it's a little bit more forgiving in terms of um, those darker marks. Okay, so that's gonna be our darkest dark, including the boat on this right hand side. So now what we need to do to make this look further away than that, and then consequently make that look further away than that and that, we need to think about tone. So as things go into the distance, generally, and because we've got a lot of mist and kind of a, a, a quite a misty effect going on here, things tend to get lighter and more close in tone to the surrounding atmosphere. So where this is quite a gray soft um, tone, we need to make these buildings closer to that than they are to that and also to that to make it look further away, okay? So we're gonna do this set of buildings first because it's, if we try and do that one after doing this one, we'd probably make that one too light and then this one would be too difficult to fit in. So we're gonna do this one next and then we'll do that one. So all I'm gonna do is just with my charcoal in a vertical fashion, it doesn't have to be vertical, but because these are buildings and we're trying to suggest them um, having some weight to it and also um, being in a vertical manner, doing our shading in a vertical fashion is not a bad idea. It's not that you have to do it, but it will just make it feel a bit easier to accept that they're upright structures. So I'm just gonna fill all of this contour shape in. It doesn't have to be too neat. You know, if you've got it a bit messy, it doesn't matter because we're gonna wipe into it. So you just want to fill all of this shape in like so, okay? So now this is darker than that. And then obviously this is lighter than, than the both of them. So that we can actually manipulate this one, I'm actually gonna put a tiny bit of tone on here. I know we've got the, the charcoal underneath, but I'm just gonna very, very lightly, and this is pressing even lighter. So this is hardly any pressure on the charcoal at all but it's very, very light just to get some tone or some added tone into that background area. <clears throat> so you should end up with something roughly like that. So I'll give you a moment or two just to fill those in. What I'm going to do now is just start to um, play around with the, the value. So as you see, when I start to wipe into this, we get a value change. And by value change or tonal change, what I'm talking about is it gets lighter or gets darker in tone. So I'm just going to play around a little bit with wiping into, into this. Obviously, if it doesn't change enough, you just get a cleaner bit of tissue. And then we can just soften all of this sky off. So it becomes a little bit lighter. And let's just get a little bit of light in between those buildings. You can even use your finger if you want to. Soften it off. Clean your finger now and again just to, or use a clean finger. Just to get 
some light behind these buildings and give the idea of maybe some cloud or something like that. So let's bring that right up to our sun. Now, obviously, if you wipe off too much, then all you need to do is just get some more of the dust that we put on at the beginning. And you can just add more charcoal back on top of this so that you don't lose, don't lose everything. Let's just bring that down a little bit so the sun's a bit more bedded in. <clears throat> and then let's take out some of this around the back of these buildings. So as I said, if you don't want to get your finger dirty, then just do this with tissue paper. I just find it a little bit easier to manipulate it with my finger. There we go. So we get this sort of light band coming down the back of, down the back of the, um, the buildings. Okay, so that's the sky. Now we need to soften off the um, our main our main set of uh, our main whatever you want to call it church. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a brush. So I'm just going to take any old brush, you know, something that's reasonably soft, just a paintbrush. Um, just something that you can um, clean off and also um, just manipulate the charcoal with. So the reason I'm using this as opposed to using my finger is twofold. One is it's a little bit easier to control the um, where you take the charcoal off from. And secondly, because it's a straight brush, or a, um, yeah, a straight brush, when I do these vertical structures, it's a bit easier to get into those shapes to, um, to manipulate them. So I'm just gonna wipe. And obviously, again, if you take off too much, then you can just add more charcoal back on. So we just take that off the edge there. Just wiping it nice and softly. I'm not pressing very hard. It's quite quite light that I'm pressing. So we'll knock out a bit of this coming down to our water's edge. Okay, cleaning off the brush. So just knocking it off on some tissue. Now back here, obviously this is gonna to need to go lighter again. So we'll just lift out an amount of the charcoal. <clears throat> so I'm leaving the, um, the contour a little bit darker at the moment so we don't lose the whole shape of the building. Obviously if you don't like that effect and that is just a personal thing, you could you could theoretically wipe some of that contour off as well so it's a lot lot lighter. Um, just so it's not so strong. Okay so that's now that distant part done, just very, very lightly. Uh, in fact, we know we'll leave that main building for the moment. We're going to get the going to get the boat drawn in now. So that's going to be the next task. So I'll give you a moment or two just to dust that off, and then we'll bring in the main gondola shape, and then we'll start to add a bit more detail and worry about all the water and all the rest of it. <clears throat> main um, buildings a little bit further over than it is in the reference. 
So if I look at the <coughs> reference, the actual edge of the gondola or the far right hand side of the boat comes directly under the sun. Now, if I do that on mine, I've either got to make the boat smaller to fit it in, or I can just move it over slightly. So I think I'm going to do the second thing and move it over very slightly to have my boat about here. So what do we need to look for with this? So the um, to make the boat look like it's within the same space as everything else, so it doesn't look like it's floating and <clears throat> kind of uh, not situated within this water. I need to look at the um, this far right edge of the boat. How high up does that tip point come to meet the line that's going through here? And it's not quite touching it. It's almost there, but it's not quite. Okay, so I'm going to put that in as a point first. The second point I'm going to put in is how wide do I want my boat? So I'm going to come across probably to about here. And I'm just going to make a little mark for the front of the boat. Looking as well at, I know we've got another, there's sort of another boat in the way, so you can't quite see how close it is to that line, but it's lower on this side than it is on this side. So this side's higher, this side's lower. So let's bring this down. It's not quite vertical, it's sort of going out at an angle slightly. <clears throat> and then we've got a slight vertical, although it is coming into the left a little bit. So we've got our two edges, a little bit like we did up here with the uh, the dome, we kind of defined the width. However, unlike the dome, it's not a true curve. Okay, we've got lots of different things kind of going on here. So what I need to figure out is where is the, um, the bottom of the boat? Where does it meet the water on this left hand side? Okay, and then on the right hand side, where does that line meet the water on the right hand side? And if I look at it, uh, very, very slightly. It's higher on this left hand side than it is on this right hand side. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So over here, the angle of the boat changes, the, turns the corner, and then it meets the water roughly about there. Okay. But on this right hand side, it is lower than the left hand side. And basically, what that's meaning is is that the boat is slightly twisted away from us. It's not straight, it's not totally side on. This front part of the boat is further away from us than the back part of the boat. Okay, now to express that, obviously when we draw, the back part of the boat needs to be lower. So if I draw a line across here, as we're imagining that's our imaginary line, this side of the boat needs to be lower than that side of the boat, okay? So it's going to come roughly about about there. And I'm guessing it. I'm not if you really want to measure it and be very accurate, then you can do. Uh, I'm just kind of guessing this at the moment. And the angle of the boat goes up like that. <clears throat> now, if you get this wrong and you put this one higher than that one, then two things will happen. One is it will start to look like the back of this boat is tipping out of the water. It's going to feel like it's, you know, all the people have been hit by a wave and it's kind of pushing them over. Or it's going to make that front part of the boat look, feel like it should be closer to us, the viewer, than the front, than this part of the boat. And if you get it around the wrong way, then the boat won't sit properly in the water. Okay, so we've said that. So now we get this little triangle shape. So then we get this shadow that kind of comes this way and notice i'm not trying to draw the bottom of the boat we don't care where that is okay so don't get caught up by trying to figure out where that is in the shadow all you need to do is put this shadow shape in so we come down like that and then we get a shadow line that comes across and then it sort of wiggles its way comes across here and then we're into the shadow of the figure which is going to wiggle its way down there doesn't have to be too accurate we're just going to um, guess this come up and then we come across in the shadow, wiggles its way round and then 
back to the front of the boat. So you kind of get something like that. <clears throat> Inside the boat, what happens is we get the depth of the, um, the hull. So let's take the widest part, which is roughly just above where we've just talked about. So it comes roughly there. <clears throat> that might be a little bit too deep actually, come a bit lower. And that's going a little bit less steep than this line. Comes back, comes in, and then we've got this funny little hook at the back, like that. So this line is slightly less steep than that line. Not a lot, just very marginally. So how do we then get this line to meet this line over here? Because this line is pretty crucial to make us feel like we're in a boat rather than it's just a, a log or something sort of floating on the water. So we need to look back over here where we just talked about. So it's a lot narrower at this point than it is at this point. So look at that distance, it's a lot wider. This distance is a lot narrower. But there's something going on here in the, remember when we talked about in the very early stage about being able to see inside um, shapes, which makes it feel like it's below our eye level. I don't know if you can see, but just right at the bow here, you can start to see inside the boat. And we're not gonna draw it like that, but I'm just trying to explain why it's gonna do what it's gonna do in a second. So we can start to see just inside here. So what that means is, is that this line is gonna go downhill very slightly. So downhill, okay, so down towards the bottom of your picture. Then it's gonna go straight. Just trust me on this for a second. It's gonna sound a bit weird, but here we go. And then we go back uphill to meet this line, okay? So we go downhill, straight, uphill. And that will give us a kind of a curve on this front edge. And that's quite important if you wanna sort of say that this is a, a boat, as I said, rather than just a kind of a log. So then let's put a vertical here. It's probably too wide, but never mind. So there's a vertical there, and then it's kind of, got this funny little shape thing on the front of the boat, like that. Okay, <clears throat> then to put the people in the boat, all I'm gonna do is I'm just going to just create some funny little silhouettes. So I'm gonna fill in a block here, and maybe another little block next to it, a little bit lower perhaps. And then we'll give this one a small head. Don't make the heads too big. And a little head there. So it almost just, um, uh, like little ovals, nothing too complicated. Then there's some stuff going on here. There's a seat there. And then we've got the guy, actually these need to be a bit bigger. Let's make those a bit bigger. This is the beauty of this kind of medium. If you want to change something, it's very easy. Make him a bit larger. There we go. Um, and then we've got a guy sort of standing in a gesture that goes up like this. So I'm going to draw the shape of the line the way that I want the character to go first. Then I'm going to look at his shoulders and if I look at his left shoulder, the one closest to us, it kind of goes down like that because he's leaning into the pole, which is kind of going, oops, I go through the boat, kind of going like so. So if you want to get a little bit of movement into the figure, then don't make him bolt upright. So then we get an arm here, we get an arm kind of there, and then we get this sort of sway in his legs that sort of converge at the bottom. And then you're going to get a small little head at the top. And obviously we can play around with that, but 
is kind of the idea. And then we just fill that shape in. Fill that in <clears throat> like so. And then all we do is just fill in this whole, this whole shape so that it's one silhouette. And that's why silhouettes are quite nice to play with because you don't have to worry about any internal shapes. You're just looking at the larger shapes. And when we fill all this in, hopefully, it'll feel like a boat sitting on the water if we got it right and then make sure that's underneath so this is our silhouetted character roughly roughly like so <clears throat> and we can play around with that in a bit but that's the basic idea good okay so we'll leave you to i'll give you a few minutes to get that done before we start playing around with it what are we doing for time? What is the time? Half past. Where's my where you go? And the first thing I'm going to do is there's some little pontoons, not pontoons, but it looks like bits of wood or something kind of sticking up that are a bit darker than this building, but a little bit lighter. A little only marginally lighter than these uh, than the boat so i'm going to start to put some of those in because they all help to break up the this long monotonous line underneath the building so let's just put some shapes that sort of just disappear into the distance back there don't have to be too logical just to break up this edge coming across, maybe something a little bit stronger there. Perhaps another thing over here. I know there's some boats over there, but we're going to, I'm going to ignore those. You can put them in if you want. Okay, that's fine. A little bit more detail just in our boat. And then there's a little bit of reflection down there. Okay, stop fiddling with that. So now what I'm going to do is just use my finger again into the water, start to lift off a little bit of light as we're coming, let's use the brush on that, as, <coughs> excuse me, as we're coming closer to the, obviously our sun, which is here, our light source. So just in between these little bits of dark, I'm just going to lift out some of the charcoal just to give us a nice light band through back here. And even I use a putty rubber for this because it's very small. There's a tiny little bit of light um, between the chaps or underneath the chaps arm. Just need to manipulate, soften that off. Okay, and then we'll just soften off around his legs a little bit. I'm gonna make the boat a bit darker. I'm just gonna press a bit harder. to make it stand out a bit more.
and just break up this shape a little bit. So it's a bit big as well, so I need to just temper it. Make it a little bit smaller. Soften it off into the water. Use my finger just to create some slight variations in the in the water. And over here again, same thing. Particularly near a light source, we want it a little bit broken up. Okay, I'm going to take the putty rubber now and just get some very clean um, or cleaner whiter bits to indicate the sun really shining. And perhaps a little bit there. And as we come down into our so just little crisscrossy type type marks with the putty rubber. Okay, that's probably enough of that. Moving over to this side, soften off the bottom of this reflection. If we darken up, get some stronger shapes inside. Going to even out the tone in this building. Okay, maybe lighten some more into here. So what I'm doing with the brush here is just evening out the, the tone, not really taking off or putting on, I'm just trying to Take out some of the marks, make it a bit softer. Just soften some of this down, it's a little bit too marky. Soften this cloud in a little bit more, it's a bit too dark. <clears throat> so a nice light, fairly light sky. Let's even soften off these distant buildings a bit more. Just to get it all to merge and feel very, very soft. drag through here as well just to soften this a bit more take some of the marks out 
So basically the more marks you have within a shape, the more the eye tries to read those as little bits of detail. So if you want the shape to feel very soft or to just blend in, you want to reduce the number of internal marks or the number of marks to stop it feeling quite so, so um, too many, you know, too many internal shapes. So I'm just going to put a few bits of tone just here and there, just to break up the water a little bit more. Too much the variation. Knock that down a bit. Work it in. Work that shadow in a bit more. Or reflection, I should say. And there we go. This, yeah, just. Um, yeah, I think I've charcoal. Charcoal. I would use a charcoal fixative rather than use the pastel one. All right. I'm not sure um, and then just give it a very light spray. Don't spray it too close, otherwise, you'll get big droplets. Midge is going to come. Hopefully you can see that okay, yep. So what I would do is I would do the same thing again, just get myself some charcoal. Okay, like so. And then same process, just tap it, tap it onto the um, onto your paper. Get rid of that. And then smudge it in. Now, obviously in this um, reference, we've got a light passage in the water. So I need to bear in mind that I want to keep that pretty, pretty white, like you would if this was a watercolor. So I'm going to darken up this left-hand side, leaving that light passage in the middle. Get rid of the rest. So we end up with, I don't know, a shape similar to that. Doesn't have to be exactly like that, but it's similar to that. <clears throat> I then get my um, pencil, that pencil, piece of charcoal. So someone asked me how you can sharpen it. So this is just a piece of willow charcoal here. So I can hold it on the side and then I can get a sharpish, sharpish point to it. Okay, so that's how I get the point. So then I would define where my, roughly my eye level is, which is kind of going sort of through there. First thing I need to do is pick out the edge of the first building. So that's going to be the buildings on the left, which are coming down vertically below the eye level. Okay, so they come below the eye level. Then I'm going to roughly define the angle of these buildings. So they come out towards the left here. Try and keep it straight-ish or straight if you can. Don't need that line. Oh, then we've got a, um, a shadow which sort of cuts across the water. Then it goes out to the right. That was a good guess and then it kind of goes out of the picture. I've got a bridge that is coming across above our eye level and it goes behind this building. So it goes up, across and then down. So just do it as straight lines to start off with. It's much, much easier. And then it meets the buildings on this right hand side So we'll just take that as a straight edge for the moment. Then the buildings on the right hand side are going out of the picture like so. Now I don't know if you remember back to when we talked about the perspective 
right at the very beginning, we talked about making these buildings go away from us and around the corner. So here we're doing that, that basic principle. So here it's straight, comes downhill, then it goes even more downhill. So then we've got some buildings kind of in the distance here. So another vertical line. We can have vertical lines breaking into, so let's go from there. Vertical line there, and then we can drop another vertical kind of down there, maybe another one over here. We've got the top of the bridge. Let's just knock that out. So the top of the bridge kind of goes through there. And then it comes down and then it goes in to the building. So that's the building going to be in there. So those, those few lines are the basic, what you would call structure of the, you know, of the, of the perspective and also of the drawing. Once you've figured out where all that is, you can then place all the other elements. So there's no point me starting off with my little boat and um, man down here and then trying to put the buildings around it. I've got to put the buildings and then I can put the man in. So let's start off with the boat. So the boat comes down roughly about here. So the front of the boat is going to be about, or the top of the bow is about there. I'm looking at the edge of this building um, and kind of coming across to where the, the pointy bit of this boat is. <clears throat> now to get this to kind of look like it's coming out and around, we come out there, then we come straight, and then at the back we're coming in. We've got a, a vertical coming down here. There's a straight bit on the bottom and then it kind of kicks out and then it kicks out on that side. That goes up, that comes down and that goes away. Our little figure is standing on here. So let's give him some shoulders. That's his shoulders, waist, and then we've got legs that kind of Converge down there, a head. So he's got an arm here, which is another arm. And then we've got the pole coming down that way, like so. So that's the bare bones of the um, of the you know kind of the basic structure of um the drawing now i'm not going to go and start filling in all the windows and all the rest of it i'll let you do that as your homework but effectively look at these are the things i want you to look at why when you once you've got all this in what do you do next is look at the windows so in all those buildings look at the top and the bottom of the windows okay and going back to what we talked about right at the very beginning look at the angle that they're going at okay compare that side to this side so these ones are going up okay if you look at those arches look at the top they're going like so look at the windows on this side they go like so the other thing to look at okay as you're practicing this is the structures that are further away like these ones in, in the far far distance the distances between the shapes are narrower as you're coming further away, the distances get slightly longer. And you can exaggerate that even more as you're kind of um, coming towards, okay? So it's the angle and it's the distance between the shapes will define it looking into the distance, okay? And that's what I want you to try and do for your homework if you can this week. <laughs>